so welcome to the same frame. What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to another episode of the Zane Frame. I'm Zane. I am Jack. And this is a new session, so we might actually get somewhere this time, because <laughs> when you record things and you're drunk, it's just like, hey, let's stop playing this bullshit game for a second and talk about this shit. Like, fucking real talk, bro. And, uh, yeah, we actually recorded a couple episodes beyond this, but, um, the sound wasn't there. But fortunately, we were so fucking blasted, we can't remember what happened. <laughs> so, we're, we're starting with a blank slate anyway, so, okay, Jack. So, we have fought Sting Chameleon. He yeah. is hard. Yeah. We have fought Lone Octopus. He is hard. Yes. And we have fought Flame Mammoth. He's not that hard, but I still fucked up. So, select things. And remember, you can do, like, you can have to sort of like, the specs or where they are in the map. Yeah. You know, you can ask for that, too. So what's going on with the specs again? Like, it shows the specs of the thing, right? It's not really that important, actually. Because, yeah. uh, it just says, like, their name, their height and weight doesn't fucking matter, and it's just, like, their attacks. That's... Like, he does, like, a storm tornado and he dives. And fucking armored armadillo. Fucking rolling shield and guarding. And Wait, launch is... octopus. Did, like... did you just say that the armadillo is taller than the octopus? I, 6.3. I think that's a 6. 6.36. Yeah. 6. No, eight, no okay. he's, yeah, he's 8.2. Yeah. I don't know why that bothered me. I was like, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not even anywhere... Well, just because, like, in this picture, he's, like, standing up all proud and awesome, and yeah. the armadillo's all like, yeah. As just can't say it. Do. <laughs> yeah. Who are we gonna fight? There's a penguin. Let's go fuck up a hawk. Let's go fuck up a hawk? Yeah. Right on. Let's fuck this shit up. I'm out. No, wait. What? Fuck this kid, I'm out. No, I don't know. Oh. I don't know what you're talking about. Excuse me, please. I'm just grab my stuff and leave. Don't mind me. Oh my god, listen to this fucking music. Oh my god. Mega Man has the best goddamn soundtracks ever. Like, I think it was really starting like Mega Man 2. Hmm. Because, like, I'd, if there's a fucking game that has more remixed music than that... Oh, fuck! Okay, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> then I don't know of it, because it, it, like, rivals, like, fucking Final Fantasy music in the time that it's, you know, in the amount of remixes it has. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I mean, Undertale remixes get me through the day, specifically, uh, some Dude. metal stuff. I'm not, I'm not sold on Undertale remixes just because I like that... Like pixely sound that the game itself has. You oh, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the the heavy metal one. Yeah. That, to, that was that was pretty awesome. I gotta say, that's pretty awesome. Red nuts. Oh, uh, what the <laughs> fucking warhammer? <laughs> I'm a fucking nerd. <laughs> Red knots. Wait a minute. So does it take place in the year four forty thousand? Uh. Or something? Yes. Oh. Really? I was joking about that shit. That really is why it's called Warhammer 40k? Yeah, it takes place in the, uh, well, 40, 41st millennium, so everything in the year from 40,000 up to 40,999. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, 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 I got a first E tank. That, we're gonna have a lot more success just based off that shit. Look at this guy. Oh, shit! <laughs> well, there goes the windows. I'm not paying. <laughs> Look at this guy! He's exploding! <laughs> shit! <laughs> oh, shit. Maybe don't look at this guy again. Dolomite. That's a food, right? No, I think that's a future homage joke. It's based of, or maybe it is. Here's the thing: there's a black exploitation film about this just awesome Afro dude. I think it was called Dolomite. I believe you're correct. And they made a joke about it on future homage. That's the reason I knew it because I'm not wasn't alive during the whenever those films were uh, made. Yeah. yeah. I and they typically don't cover those in fucking film 101. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I can see that. That um, no, you I was can just see from the angle that they filmed him slapping this fine ass hoe that <laughs> the director was clearly feeling some issues with his father. I, <laughs> I'll, I'll take your word for that. That's actually most of the best, all most film press I've had were really cool and not like clinical at all. Oh, nice. Or, yeah, I had this one teacher. Um, shit, do you think it's okay to use his name? Uh, he doesn't work at the school anymore. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't. Okay, his name was Mr. Kelvin. Um, cause I like whenever I use false names, I like to start with the same letter. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just so I, I fucking remember who I'm talking about <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, who the fuck am I talking about with Daniel? I don't even fucking. Oh yeah, that guy. Okay, no, he also has a big name. Um, 
Mr. Kelman, he was just fucking awesome. He, there was a class where he was like, um, he was like, oh yeah, there's all these like really cheesy like Asian movies, blah blah, blah about like you know like revenge fantasy, it's a whole genre over right there, and including one called Rape Squad, and we were all like, whoa. And he had like, oh, oh, no, no, it's about a bunch of women who fight racism, rapists, and they're like, oh, okay, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, substantially better. Why is it called that? That's, <laughs> that's not a good name for it. No. Yeah. No. God, I want some fucking armor pieces. One of these days you're going to select a goddamn stranger and get an armor piece. You, you say that, but I'm going to figure out a way to make you beat this game without ever getting any kind of upgrade. Inevitably, no, you literally cannot beat the game without getting an upgrade. There's one stage that has an armor piece that you cannot get past. You have to get it. Huh. Because it, 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 like, teaches you. It, like, teaches you that, like, these exist. Yeah. And they're really fucking handy. As a matter of fact, the, the one I'm talking about is a really fucking important upgrade. It's why I'm failing all the time, because I'm used to having it. And... Which I kind of hate, to tell you the truth. Because, uh, hey, Storm Angle, how's it going? He's a bitch. <laughs> a bitch. Ah! Okay, so can I just, can, can I just ask a question real quick? Yes. You ran down the side of the ship, you got down to a little hangar thingy, and you got inside the ship, and then half the ship blows the fuck up. I think Mega Man like blew it up from the inside or some shit. I hope so, because otherwise, what the fuck kind of, you know, ridiculous structural problems does this thing have? I feel like this was explained, as much as I rag on Mega Man X Maverick Hunter, uh, the PSP uh, remake, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, there are actually like cutscenes with the Reploids, and I think like... Mega Man's like, Storm Eagle, why'd you blow your own fucking shit up? And he's like, ah, I'm crazy, because the whole thing about Mavericks is, um, I'm not so sure about this game, but there's a thing called the Sigma virus. The Sigma's actually the main enemy of this game, but I don't know if he's in virus for the end. Oh. Um, I think that's revealed in, like, the second game. But, um, it basically makes Reploids go crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it makes them, like... The Red Re don't have the three walls. They have, they can make choices. Yeah, yeah. But, um, they do have, Jesus Christ, everybody stop texting me. Sorry about that guy. I don't even know if you can pick it up over there. Because it's me and Jack, the microphone's in an unorthodox place. So, it's like, I don't even know what picks up. I was listening to a bunch of alternative music and reading some dark poetry. Yeah. Did I ever finish talking about Mega Man? That's pretty cool. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, they, it just makes me go crazy. They have choices, but then they just turn, like, psychotic. They're just like, all humans! Ah, ha, ha, ha. That sounds And they reasonable. just completely lose their shit. Like, every fucking, like, issue or whatever they have com completely comes to the surface, and it makes them, like, utterly act on it. And it also makes them like Sigma, because he's their, ah, the Mavericks leader, and actually, he is a virus. Huh. As a matter of fact, eh, this is not really a spoiler alert. Sigma always comes back in every game, every goddamn game. Yeah. Um, because he's not a. Oh god oh. damn it! <sighs> the only reason, the only way you can actually end up killing him at the so far end of the series, mm -hmm. because it only made up to Mega Man X8, uh -huh. even though X8 ends with a fucking not really a cliffhanger, oh. but uh, something resembling it. Um is uh, you fight him on the moon. And since he has, at that point, uh, our heroes are like vaccinated against him. Uh, yeah, or it's, that's kind of ambiguous. But you end up fighting him on the moon and there's nothing left for him to infect. So he dies out, like for good this time. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's actually, is kind of bad as the later games go. I, everybody knows my opinions on fucking Mega Man X7, which is handily the worst Mega Man game ever made. Uh, which is a shame. Uh, I, I can tell a lot of, like, a lot of thought, I want to say, went into it, but <laughs> there were just some things that really bogged it. It tried to do too much, I think. And plus just some of the character designs and the format and the things. And, there's one boss named Flame Hyenard who says, Burn to the ground! And uh, he says it constantly. So it's just like, Burn! Burn! Burn to the ground! Burn to the ground! Burn! Yes! Finally! Murder happens. <laughs> oh. I don't want no crack it no more, bitch. I just remembered there's something you mentioned before we lost this episode last time. But 
Something about clouds. Oh yeah, when you're fighting the uh, storm eagle, the clouds are going and uh, the you know ascending thing. They're heading down. Yep. Because you're heading up. Yep. But then when you defeat storm eagle, the ship starts falling. Yep. Which is actually pretty interesting. We still need to defeat a boss to go back and get something in Spark Mandrel stage. Uh huh. But in this game. Different things happen when you defeat different bosses. Right on. Yeah, so like defeating Storm Eagle before Spark Mandrel uh, has effects in his stage. Oh. Yeah. And there's another, there's there's quite a few <laughs> like that. As a matter of fact, it, uh, one of them makes Flame Mama stage a fucking walk in the park. Huh. So, all right, so we finally fucking have a victory. Uh, oh, look at that. All right, that worked out <laughs> fucking awesome. Nice. <laughs> okay, so join us next time for more drunken Mega Man hijinks and we will see you on the next episode of the Zane Frame. Gourmet Let's Plays for discerning Let's Play viewers. Oh yeah.